name is Sam and thanks for checking out this video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button down below, hit the bell notification, and give the video a thumbs up. So as always, I wanted to tell you my thoughts on the books that I read this week, and I read a total of five, and I'm very, very happy with that. So the first book that I read, I feel like this is a week of mostly rereads, I wonder if. No, that's a lie. I read a couple books, like, as rereads. The first one being A Madness So Discreet by Mindy McKinnis. This is the first book that I, like, I fell in love with by the author. She's so good, and, like, she's autobi for me, but, I mean, the big thing is, like, she writes in, like, so many different genres, and she always talks about, like, such, like, serious things, but it's it always, like, makes you want to read the book and not be like, oh, God, this is horrible. <sighs> I don't want to read this. It's just so good. So Madness So Discreet is a historical fiction set in the United States in the... I want to make sure I get the date right. I want to say 18th century. I think that's right. I can't find the exact date right now. But it follows our main character where at the beginning she is put in an insane asylum. And in that time period, you know, insane asylum... I mean, there was this big, like, kind of breakthrough. I mean, we still have issues with that, but there was this big breakthrough years after the setting of, like, how we actually treat people with mental illnesses. And so this is before all of that, where, you know, therapy is, like, waterboarding people and all that kind of stuff. So our main character is basically teenage, and she is put in there because she is pregnant out of wedlock. And we find through the whole process of this book who that is and the abuse that she's been at the receiving end of and, and who that has been from. And however, she doesn't spend a, a large amount of time in there. She gets kind of rescued, saved, and brought along as they everyone thinks she's had a lobotomy. So she pretends to be just kind of vacant and not there. So she is used essentially by this doctor mortician guy who does all these autopsies in a town far away. He takes her with her. Um, he, they basically use her as like kind of like a, a watchful eye. They think anyone will say anything to her. And so she gets to kind of help with this serial killer case going on there. But she also gets taken into where the doctor is housed in this new town at another asylum. But you can see such stark contrast in how the old asylum treated her versus this new one. And she makes friends here and she just finally gets to grow in a safe place. But she also has to remember that she has a, a younger sister left at home and she knows that her mother didn't protect her when she was younger. So she is trying to develop on her own, stay on her own, let everyone think they faked essentially her death because they accidentally gave her the lobotomy. This whole thing going on. And then these friends that she makes at this new place essentially like kind of give some people their just desserts and it's really really interesting it talks about quite a few different things there is abuse there's early teen uh, early pregnancies um there is <laughs> some egos in here and oh it's just so good it's such a very weird book to so thoroughly enjoy just because of the topics but i really really loved it all the historical detail the author's note is really good as well it kind of explains of like you know this place wasn't actually real but I pulled it from, you know, we have all this information of how people were treated. Or the asylum that was, like, really, really good was actually, I guess, a real one and you can go visit it. So there's just all this really cool random information that, as someone who likes history, I like this. But as well as, like, this is kind of, like, an under, like, touched historical thing. We do a lot of, like, World War Twos, which I love. But we do a lot of, like, military. And we tend to have predominantly male perspectives. So it was really, really interesting to get, like, literally the opposite of all that. I really, really liked it. And it did make me think and reflect on myself of, like, how far would you go for revenge? And, like, is murder, like, is that if it may feel right in the time with revenge, but, like, will that make you, are you able to continue going on living after that? Because that is the whole point of getting out and getting safe is being able to live your own life now. So, yeah, five out of five stars. It's going to be a yearly reread for me. I love it. I breeze through it in a couple hours and it's just so good. Then I very happily read The Poppy War by R.F. Kuang, and I have a new obsession with this book. Oh my goodness. I'm so, so sad. There's like no info so far on the sequel. So this is an adult historical fiction fantasy, and it's so good. It follow. It, 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 okay, how do I describe this book? So there, it's kind of tied into the actual history of the opium wars that we had in Asia, where, you know, we flooded the Asian continent with all of these narcotics and battles ensued over it because we have drug wars. I mean, we, we do it nowadays, just like not, well, 
on the low key government. <laughs> but, you know, this was an active like government initiative a lot of the time. So it follows our main character who's grown up super, super poor in this part of China. And they have this essentially like, it's not like a reaping, it's like a, a good reaping, I guess, where everyone can take uh, this written test. It's like a 12 hour long test. And whoever scores in the highest uh, percentile, I can't remember what, I want to say this is the top 10, um, can go to essentially like a training school to be the elites of this, you know, I don't want to say country because it wasn't really a unified country at the time. But this geographic area and our main character is actually an orphan who was taken in by this family and this family abuses her to no end they smuggle opium in and around and they use her essentially as a drug mule and it's not really legal at this time and so she wants out because they're planning on getting her an arranged marriage to some like senior dude just to benefit their opium trafficking. So she decides for like three years straight to study, study hard for this test. And she actually ends up ranking number one in their um, test. So she, in the top, top of the percentile, you get to go to like the elitist of the schools for free. So she can go because it is free. So it's just, it, things go haywire from there. There's kind of magic. People have like different, I don't want to, I don't know what the proper way to describe it is, but like, have their own, like, you get to choose which area to stutter and study and master, and there are saints that are brought in, and it turns out that she has this really, really unique power that they don't really understand, and no one really knows how to train her on it, and pull. But it's just so, so good. Once again, just like a madness so discreet, the ending made me think of, like, what lengths would you go for revenge? Like, if you had to draw that line, because you have to remember, you know, you can want to kill people all you want, but you have to remember, are you that person that could live with that? And I don't know. I feel like a madness so discreet maybe be like, no, I don't think I could do the murdering. And at the end of this one, I was like, yeah, I could murder people. <laughs> the settings are really cool. The magic elements are really cool. And it's very slowly introduced. So you kind of get a chance to get a handle on the history and the setting because it isn't a setting that I've normally read all that much. And there is, oh, it's just so cool. I'm so excited for the sequel. <sighs> It's amazing. And like the the back shows just kind of how cool it is. There's not a ton of like serious violence, but there's like a lot of like battling and skills and like preparing martial martial arts and it's just so cool. Five out of five stars. You need to read this book. You need to. It's so good. Then I picked up Rebel of the Sands by Alan Hamilton. Finally I've owned this book for like I gotta say probably two years now. It feels like a long time. I've been very hesitant to pick up this series, partially because this is the first book, and then they did a mid-series cover change for the second and the third book. So I either have to deal with wrong cover changes, or deal with mismatching formats, or rebuy the whole trilogy in all, like, one cover. And I hate the covers, to be totally honest, in the U.S. So at that, I'd probably have to buy the U.K. covers, which means dealing with Book Depository. And book Depository takes forever to ship in Canada. So it's just... I don't know if I wanted to get into that. And now, this is a hard one to actually review. I think I read this book three days ago, and I legitimately can't remember a single thing about this book. I don't know if it was forgettable, if it was the mindset that I was in. I, I don't know, but I feel like I read the summary. I was like, yeah, I think I remember parts of that, but like, that's kind of it. I didn't hate it. I just don't think it was essentially really as unique as I thought it was going to be. It's a main character set in the desert. And this, she's one of like, adopted by her uncle who has like a million other kids and it sounds like they want to like marry her off to another guy who's got like five other wives. So she kind of makes a break for it. And she's kind of got sharpshooter skills. And they go on this journey through the desert to try and find and help the kind of lost prince to bring back, you know, sanity to her place and they go to like the big city and magic stuff comes up that's like legitimately all that I retained from this book so I feel like I think I ended up giving it like a three and a half out of five stars but like I said there wasn't anything that like annoyed me I have a feeling it was just like partially mood based so 
like I said, three and a half stars out of five stars now, but I think I am going to give it another chance when I'm in the mood for more of a historical fiction, or more of a fantasy. I read this when I probably should have read a historical fiction instead, that, that was kind of my mood. So don't let that deter you. But I thought the setting was really cool, and the magic stuff had kind of potential. I think my thing too is like, it's very short, and I think it tried to do a lot in very little time and a bunch of the stuff wasn't as developed as it needed to be. Once again, it's not a setting I'm used to. You set something in like Canada, I can fill in the gaps. I can put a Tim Hortons in the background in my mind of things or like, you know, New York City. I can see the Statue of Liberty vaguely in the distance, but the desert is just like, I just think of the mummy at that point. <laughs> and the good one with Brendan Fraser and Rachel Weisz, not that Tom Cruise catastrophe. So I think I'm going to give this one another go. Um, and we'll see how I feel about that. Then I did a reread of The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J. Mass. I am prepping for Kingdom of Ash to be released, and this is the prequel novella stories. And I will say, I think I even wrote this in my review, this is probably one of the better, like, prequel novella bind-ups that have been released in a series, because a lot of the time you read them and you're like, what was the point of this? You just wanted some more money out of me. It really contributed nothing to this entire story. So I actually appreciated this. I think it developed the characters an awful lot. It developed Selena a lot getting to meet Sam and know everything that they went through be before the beginning of Throne of Glass. And I feel like the first time I read Throne of Glass, I didn't know that this existed. And then I was like, meh, it's all right. Like, I kind of like this character. I'll probably continue the series. And then someone was like, no, read Assassin's Blade first. So I read this and then reread Throne of Glass and it like increased tenfold. Part of it could have been my mood once again. But it really did contribute. I got a better understanding of the world, of the politics, getting to see another part of it rather than just like the Glass Kingdom area that we are at the beginning. And to just develop the world rather than just the magic of the world, which it really does get developed in the rest of the books. But I feel like the setting itself at that point is established almost. So it just lets goes crazy with the magic. So I think this really helped me with that. I also really love that we meet characters here that we meet later on in the series. Like, it really did just tie in so beautifully to the rest of the series, and it does contribute to the rest of the books, which I really love. I love Irene especially, but I really, 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 really like this, and I think it contributes really well to the series. So, five out of five stars. Highly recommend. And lastly, this week, I picked up and read Orphan Monster Spy by Matt Keelan, I think it is. I think that's how I heard it. I, I listened on the online to the audiobook to, to hear it by, because it was bugging me. So this is a World War II historical fiction. Once again, this is probably what I should have read instead of reading Rebel of the Sands. I should have read that first. So it follows our main character, who's named Sarah, in World War II. Her mother, it was a single mother, and it starts off with her mother being, bar like, shot at a, uh, trying to go through an access point to get to Switzerland, I think they're going, trying to get to. They are originally from Berlin, but they fled to Austria, and then Austria gets invaded, as we all know, World War II. So they go back, and they're trying to survive. Her mother is of Jewish descent. Though they are not religious Jewish, they are still persecuted because, you know, Hitler. I feel, I actually feel kind of bad. The main character, Sarah, has been in addition to being, like, persecuted for something that she has absolutely no control over and should not in any way justify being horrible to a human being. She has also tried to take care of her mother, who's now an alcoholic. She used to be an actress, but she's kind of been abandoned by her father, and she can no longer work because she's Jewish. So it's really, really interesting that you get these kind of alternative timelines of it starts with her mother being killed and then as we go through it flips to her mother when she was still alive and seeing Sarah and how her life has led up to where we are now and right at the beginning she runs when her after her mother is shot and tries to hide instead of getting you know picked up logical and she meets someone who is essentially a British spy pretending to be German. She's used to infiltrate a boarding school where the daughter of one of the doctors who they believe is building a bomb is his daughter is going so he wants to kind of befriend her and then have her go to the house because the house is like this bunker castle mansion thing and she has lots to do and it's also kind of weird that she has to like befriend all these people who would want her dead if they knew her real name was Sarah so it's it's very interesting if it did not go the direction I thought it was going to go at the end it's I, I got to that and I was like well all righty then, because there once again is some molestation-y kind of stuff, trigger warning, fair warning, and 
that was not ex where I was expecting it to go. However, I actually thought it was really interesting. The author's note, the author kind of, it's, uh, I think it's quite actually a little bit longer of an author's note than I'm used to. It talks about the whole fact of like, t it takes a village to raise a child and children that go hungry because, you know, they were Jewish in World War II and how people standing up is really the only way that you're going to get around these things and that we have all of these other issues in this world that really they existed here. We still have them. We pretend that we have, we're just, this drastically different world when we don't we have a lot of the same issues that we have this annoying habit as human beings of repeating the exact same mistakes over and over and over again but swearing up and down to ourselves that this time it's different whatever the prejudice or problem being and i thought it was really interesting at the end we get to denmark and we, we never really talk i feel like a lot about these other places but like those neutral countries you know they were neutral as in like they weren't trenches dug dropping bombs and having concentration camps but you were by no means safe in a lot of these countries it was kind of a temporary place until you they got invaded again so it it's just so interesting that you got to the end and that was where you ended it wasn't like this oh they're okay and in fact the main character is going to go back to berlin at the end of all this so we never actually really find out you know does everyone get a happily ever after? And I kind of appreciated that for World War II books. So those are all the books that I read this week. Let me know in the comment section down below if you've read any of these books and what you thought. And let me know what you read this week. I would love to know. Make sure to check the description box down below. I will link all of these books to their Goodreads pages. And make sure to check out the links to my social media. If you follow me, I will follow you back.